On the last day of my first trip to Fogo Island as a tourist, I saw this outcrop and I was astounded by the visual story it told. On the last day of my second visit to Fogo Island, this time as one of the resident geologists with the Geology at the Edge program, I saw this outcrop. Those two outcrops hint at the dynamic geological history of Fogo Island. My name is Jane Wynn and in this video I hope to give you a quick overview of the geology of Fogo Island. Welcome to the Geology Centre here in Shoal Bay. Come on in. I'm going to use these sponges to demonstrate Fogo Island geology. The oldest rocks on the island are sedimentary rocks of the Fogo Harbour Formation. And they were laid down layer by layer by layer. They contain no fossils, so we don't quite know how old they are. And on top of these sedimentary rocks, we have the brimstone head formation, which are volcanic rocks, not to scale. Uh, they are really rich in quartz and very resistant to erosion, which is why it makes those big high headlands. This whole package of rocks was intruded by a thick sequence of igneous magmatic rocks, granites and diorites, that punched into the lithosphere and intruded into the sedimentary and igneous rocks. These magmatic rocks are called the Fogo Island intrusion and they are variably composed of granites and diorites and gabbros. The rocks on Fogo Island are deeply eroded. They've had about 400 million years of uplift and weathering and erosion. The final polish was produced by glaciation. The entire island was covered by almost a kilometer thickness of ice. That ice receded about 14,000 years ago, leaving remnants of its passage. The tilting of the rocks, and indeed the magma that produced the granites, the gabbros and the diorites of the Fogo Island intrusion, are a result of Fogo Island rocks being in the bumper zone between two mega continents. Laurasia and Gondwana. These two continents and the ocean between them closed and crashed into each other over 400 million years ago, causing mountains to go up and the keel below to punch into the mantle and begin to melt and produce the magma that generated the granites, the diorites and the gabbros exposed here on Fogo Island. This map shows the geology of Fogo Island and Change Island. The oldest rocks, Fogo Harbour Formation, shown here in grey. Sedimentary rocks laid down in a shallow marine environment. Then we have the Brimstone Head Formation, shown in yellow, and it's been dated as 420 million years old. That package of rocks was intruded by granites, gabbros and diorites of the Fogo Island intrusion series. And over here in tilting, the gabbros have been dated as 410 million years old. This diagram summarizes all the major types of igneous rocks. The Earth's surface is shown here. Depth increases as you go down the diagram, and the crystal grain size increases with depth. That's a product of the insulation of the Earth's surface. As you go down deeper, the igneous magma has more time to cool and form large crystals. So the grain size increases with depth. The surface rocks, the surface igneous rocks, are rhyolite and basalt. 
These rocks here are light colored and rich in quartz. A rhyolite and a granite have the same chemical composition. The only difference is where they crystallized. Rhyolite forms on the surface of the earth. Granite forms deep within the earth. Over here, dark colored rocks include basalt, diabase, and gabbro. The basalt is the surface equivalent of magma that formed diabase or gabbro deep within the earth, but it makes it to the surface. So the basalt has the same chemical composition as diabase and gabbro. It just has a very fine crystalline structure because it cooled quickly when it was exposed on the surface of the earth. This is an exposure of the Fogo Harbor Formation looming over the community of Fogo Town. The rocks are dipping or tilted towards the north-northwest and the big thick layers of sandstone are quite prominent. This is an abandoned quarry just outside of Fogo Town. A wonderful exposure of the Fogo Harbor Formation, the oldest rock unit exposed on Fogo Island. It has thin beds of sandstone, siltstone, and shale interbedded with huge, thick layers of sandstone. Jack Botsford has mapped this formation in detail, and he reckons there's over 1.5 kilometers thickness of sedimentary rock deposited in a shallow marine environment. I'm at the base of Brimstone Head with a fantastic exposure of the brimstone volcanics. These rocks were formed from a white hot ash cloud that tumbled down a slope and the ash fragments welded together to make a welded tuff. The orange lenses that you see here are lapilli, which is a fragment size of volcanic material, volcanic ash, and they have been flattened by the weight of the overlying rocks. So here we are in Shoal Bay, standing on the Shoal Bay granite, part of the Fogo Island intrusives. The orange rusty staining on the rocks is just a surface product of the ocean wetting the rocks and then the rocks drying and some of the iron in the minerals in the rocks being drawn out. So it's a surface feature. These granites formed deep within the Earth's surface and are a product of that continent-to-continent -continent collision. They formed about 410 million years ago and cooled slowly enough that the crystals could grow to a size sufficient that we can see them with the naked eye. The fresh surface of the granite looks quite pink and you can see the coarse grained nature of the of the crystals you can see gray quartz pink feldspar and black biotite and hornblende this outcrop is in a gravel pit in seldom it's a an exposure of diorite which is intermediate in composition between a granite and a gabbro it has much less quartz than a granite and many more black minerals, pyroxene and hornblende. The outcrop itself has this uh, rounded shape because it was polished or eroded by the presence of glaciers 13, 14,000 years ago. This sample is, uh, shows the fresh surface of a diorite. The black minerals are pyroxene and hornblende the white minerals, feldspar, and there's the occasional little bit of quartz. So here we are near this squish studio with a fabulous example of gabbro. This is a layered gabbro where the crystals in the magma have settled out slowly but surely making layer after layer of pyroxene and feldspar. The light color is feldspar, the darker colors are pyroxene rich. 
So this is an indication that the magma chamber is fairly quiescent to allow that settling to make lovely layers that have later been offset by a little bit of movement and injected with these feldspar veinlets. The coarse crystal nature of this rock is a product of slow cooling in the magma chamber. So Gabbro, part of the Fogo Island intrusive series. I'm standing on the foreshore of the Fogo Island Inn on a huge raft of Fogo Harbor formation sediments that's been swallowed up by the Shoal Bay granite. This is called an inclusion, but more specifically, it's called a xenolith. Xeno meaning foreign, lith meaning rock. So this was part of the country rock that the magma chamber intruded into ripping off fragments of the sedimentary rock as it rose in the Earth's crust. This is the sharp contact between the sedimentary xenolith and the white weathering Shoal Bay granite. Xenoliths in this granite are quite common. They can be huge or they can be quite fine and tiny. Now look at this thin piece of sedimentary rock contained by the granite. How such a fine structure persisted in a roiling magma chamber is amazing. This outcrop is Fogo Harbor formation. Sedimentary rock, sediments of uh, sandstone and siltstone interbedded and dipping down to the north. As we walk along, we see harbingers of things to come. Here's a bit of granite intruding the sedimentary rock. And over here, there's a thin seam of granite snaking along the bedding plane of the sedimentary rock. And then we come to this outcrop where the sediments are twisted into complicated shapes. Here's a bend in the rock that goes right up over the outcrop. So it starts down here snakes over this way and up and over the outcrop with bands of granite intruding into the sedimentary rock. This is granite here. This is granite here. If you go around the corner, you can see a Z fold in the rocks. It goes like this and around and up with granite coming in along the bedding planes. So granite here, granite here. There's probably a thin seam of granite here. How is this possible? Geologists are arguing about whether the folding was first in the sedimentary rock because it's in the bumper zone between two mega continents. So deformation for sure you'd have there folded rocks and then the granite sneaks in along the bedding planes or is the folding the product of being heated up by the granite and folded with the intrusion of the granite. We're essentially standing at the top of a magma chamber with granite below and sedimentary rocks of the island harbor formation above. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it was folded first and then intruded or the folds are a product of the intrusion, the results are dramatic. I want to show you one more thing. Here you can see how the granite has essentially delaminated the sedimentary rocks and bent the ends of the sedimentary rock in that direction. So clearly the flow of the granite was in this direction. These fine scale structures are quite dramatic and to have them so well exposed in a ditch outcrop like this one in Island Harbor is remarkable. 
I'm going to use Macintosh toffee to demonstrate how it is that rocks could be bent in this fashion. Here's Macintosh toffee. It's been warmed up and you can see it bends easily. That's just exactly the same way as these rocks were bent. The heat of the intrusion caused the rocks to bend easily. The relationship between the light colored granite and the broken up darker fragments of gabbro tell the story of which formed first. The black gabbro was formed first and broken into fragments by the later intrusion of a more granitic magma. This broken rock is called a breccia, Italian for rubble. More specifically, it is an intrusive breccia. The last major event to shape the landscape of Fogo Island was a series of glaciations which produced rounded hills and sculpted outcrops. The island is dotted with isolated rounded boulders called erratics, left behind by the retreat of the ice sheet. I'm standing on the eastern shore of Joe Bat's Arm, on the modern beach. Now here I am on a second beach, about five meters higher than the modern beach. Here we are on a third beach line, some 30 meters above the second one, 35 meters above the modern beach line. How did that happen? This whole area was covered by a thick ice sheet, the Laurentide ice sheet between 13 and 15,000 years ago. The weight of that ice depressed the surface of the earth, just like if you sat on a mattress of memory foam, it goes down. When the ice was removed, the land began to rise again. And with each incremental rise of the land, a new beach strand formed. So this beach strand covered with lots of lichen is the oldest, the second one is younger, and then of course the modern beach strand is the youngest. Some of the beaches like this, the ancient beaches on Fogo Island, are found to be 60 meters above modern sea level. Local people on Fogo Island call these beaches left behind, and that's exactly what they are, beaches left behind as the land rose. The graveyards and gardens of Fogo Island are commonly found in pockets of sandy ground, formerly shallow marine sediments that have been uplifted and are easy to dig. So there you have it, Fogo Island geology. The rocks are terrific. Come and see for yourself.